Hi everyone. Today I want to go do a little bit more work on regression analysis. This is basic introductory stuff, more or less. However, one of the concepts I want to go through today is the idea of an interaction and understanding interactions using regression, both the modeling aspect of it, but also the interpreting aspect of it, because it's a rich and important concept in many fields, and it's not immediately intuitive. You can understand it, kind of the language of it, but the analytical side is maybe a little bit complicated, so we'll go through it. Now, the first step in this exercise I want to go through is the creation of the data, and I want to just work from kind of an imaginary scenario. Let's say we're trying to model a person's income today. We're trying to predict, let's say, a person's income today, or into the future, but even better, based on the parental income and education. So I'm creating a data set for this purpose. And that's what these steps are. I'm creating a, a parent income variable, just randomly uh, selected or drawn from a random normal distribution, an education variable, some error. So basically, this is the unexplained component. And then I'm using these things to predict an income level. So this is kind of, this isn't something you'd ever do, but it's a way to generate data and a good way to see what the underlying structure of it is so that we can validate the, the modeling that we do. So this is more of an instructional step than anything. Okay. Now, um, I take these data, combine them into a data frame, and then just I model them, and I estimate the parameters in the model. So the I, knew, I know what the true coefficient, the true or the population coefficient, and then these point estimates. Well, I know what these parameters are because I've created the data. So the coefficient, the constant is negative 1. The coefficient for parental income is 0.35, and the coefficient for education is also 0.35. If we look down in the results window here, we can see that all the estimates from the model are fairly close to the true parameters, negative 1, 0.35, and 0.35. So that's all well and good. Now let's create an interaction. Let's imagine a scenario as follows. Let's say that in the real world, if you wanted to predict a person's income, it's a some function of parental income, education level, but also an interaction between parental, parental income and education. So imagine it in the real world on average. If, you, if your parents are wealthy but you don't have an education, you actually don't do particularly well. Maybe this you take all your money and you waste it on cocaine or something. So if you're really wealthy, your parents are really wealthy but you don't get educated, that's not good. Now, if, if you are educated and your parents are wealthy, that's great. And if you get an education overall, that's good. But if you don't have an education and your parents don't, and your parents are wealthy, you're actually um, worse off because you, let's just say, because you use your the money you have in dumb ways that actually impair your ability to earn money in the future. Let's just imagine that this is a real process. Okay, so we, f the first thing you have to do is we're, we're generating data, but I just want to explain the structure of these data briefly first. So the data that I'm creating here so I'm creating a, a, an income. What it's basically saying is that, that there's some complex interaction, both these additive effects of parental income and education, but also this multiplicative effect that is the product of parental income and education with its own coefficient. So this is what an interaction, if this was the way the scenario described, if it was realistic, this is a process that might, might generate it. So here I'm going to estimate the linear regression model. And here are my coefficients. And now I will actually estimate the same model, but with the interaction effects included. So this model, the first one includes no interaction term, and the second one includes an interaction term. And you can include it in R. The easiest way to include it is just to take the two variables that form the interaction, multiply them against each other, and put that in as a term in this linear model function, so you get an output accordingly. Now the question you might ask is, well, I mean, this is the reality of an interaction term, is that looking at the coefficients themselves, it's, it's sometimes hard to really unpack what's going on. Because you've got these two additive effects, the parent income and the education effect, and at the same time you've got this multiplicative effect, all of which need to be interpreted as a group. When you have an interaction term, you can no longer interpret these additive effects independently. It's hard to say, for example, that as education goes up, your future income goes up. 
because that, that looks true, but remember, education is also in here. So it's, this education effect, if we're looking down here into the console, I, I could just look at this effect and say for, for every one unit increase in education, I expect a 0.48 increase in income. But the problem is that that's only part of it. This term, education, is also included here. So I actually need this is conditional on, my interpretation of this variable is conditional on values of this variable. So it's actually a little bit tricky to interpret them independently in this way. Okay, so the best solution to this is to graph these things out. Rather than focusing on the interpretation of the coefficients themselves, which is very difficult, we graph them. And the first step to graphing them is to just generating some outputs here. I've, I've got the coefficients saved, and then I'm going to reclassify one of these variables. So I'm going to reclassify the parental income variable. Now I'm going to do this because it simplifies the graph. The graph is going to be comprised of an x-axis, which is education, a y-axis, which is the predicted values of future income or predicted outcome income, and then I want, I'm going to have lines on it, in particular two lines. One line is going to be for the low income people, L the low parental income people, and one line is going to be for the high parental income people. So in order to graph this out, basically two lines in a single graph with two axes, I have to reclassify this variable. This is the easiest way to do it anyway. So now that I've reclassified it, I'm going to generate predictions with this reclassified term here, DFPI variable. This is parental income, but this is a reclassified version of it. And I'm going to include that in the model. And I'm going to do this because it actually makes it easier for me to visualize the relate this three-way relationship between predicted income, parental income, and education, and the interaction between those two things. So I've now generated these kind of revised predictions, these simplified predictions. And now I'm going to graph it out. And by graphing it, you're going to see what I mean here. OK, so. Now we have two lines on a graph. Again, at the bottom side here, what you can see, if we zoom, if we just scroll, drag this up a bit, on the x-axis here is education. You can't see the label, but it's down here. This is education, goes from low education to high education. On the y-axis, we have the predicted values of future income. So this is what the model is trying to predict, the future income, and in this, and what we've got are two lines. The red line is for people whose parents had high income. So what it says is that if your parents have high income, uh, y y your, the relationship between education and your, your income is going to be different from those people whose parents had low income. In fact, what it shows us is that if you have no education but your parents had high income, according to this model, which is, again, contrived and made-up data, you're worse off. You see the people down, the predictions down here. This is, these are the people who've got no education, but parents have high income. These people end up quite poor, proportionally. They end up even poorer than people with no education and parents with low income. So the worst thing to be, according to this model anyway, is to have parents that have high income, but for you yourself to have no education. And conversely, if you've got a high education and your parents have high income, you're the best off. You're the most fortunate person here. And what we see is that for people with lower parental, inc lower parental income, education pays, but it doesn't pay quite as well. It, but it does protect you a little bit at this end. So if you've got no education, well, at least you don't end up some addled brain cocaine addict like the people with parents who have high income but no education. So this is a visual display of a particular interaction. And the truth is it's the kind of thing that we'd want to look at many examples of to really to build an intuition of. So you could do that. You could go back into this code and just change these coefficients, in particular these ones here, change them around, change the signs, and see how that changes what this graph looks like and helps you understand how to interpret this complex relationship. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to say about interactions and regression. I think in some other videos, maybe I'll explore this again just so you can build a better intuition of it. Okay, thanks. Bye.